The following video guide will outline what I have found to be the most consistent strategy for completing the Zombies in Spaceland Easter Egg on Solo without Director's Cut. This video will assume you already know how to beat the Easter Egg, i.e. you know how to open Pack Punch, where the study con parts are, all that. The main strategy outlined in this video isn't built for speed, but it still only takes about an hour. Before going into the game, make sure you put as many attachments as you can onto the M1, prioritizing FMJ, Hollow Point, and Extended Mags. Also make sure you can put on Fate Cards Scope Dollars and Eagle Eyed. You can also bring in Fortune Cards if you want to use them, but they're certainly not necessary. Death Party, Perkinshirt, and Hide and Seek can all be very helpful for staying alive. I will be giving a recommended round to be on for each step, but you may be ahead or behind a little, and that is totally okay. The rounds I give are only for reference. It is suggested you watch through the entire video before going on to attempt the egg, just so you know it's coming. For the strategy, keep in mind that the HUD cutter will be your wonder weapon, and that the M1 will be your main weapon. From spawn, save up points while making your way directly to the arcade. It's up to your preference if you want to put Neil together, but I find he gets in the way during the boss fight so I strongly recommend that you don't put them together. When you get to the arcade, it should be about the end of round 2, maybe the beginning of round 3. Whichever round it, you're at, get there on. Save a zombie, and start making tickets until you have at least 950 tickets. With those tickets, buy cryonades, gold teeth, and an arcane core. Make sure that the arcane core goes on an M1. The wall buy for the M1 can be found in spawn for 500 points. When I told you to bring in scope dollars and M1, you probably guessed what the money strat would be, and you're partially right. The difference is that for this strategy, you're going to use the Yeti at the entrance of Polar Peak to line up the zombies to use scope dollars more efficiently. If you kill more than one zombie with a single shot of the M1, only one charge of the scope dollars will be used, but the money will be given for each zombie killed. The money strat should be used up to and during round 6. While doing this, you can also earn the battery you will need for the head cutter by killing 10 zombies the Yeti freezes with headshots. There will be an audible roar when 10 headshots are performed. The number is cumulative, so don't stress about getting 10 zombies frozen at once. During that time, you are most likely to encounter a clown round. It is very important that you do not waste charges of scope dollars on the clowns. For me, the clown round is the most difficult part of the easter egg. Cryonades can insta-kill the clowns, but you can only have two. To stay on the safe side, you can trade your candles in for a hailstorm found at the spawn room for 500 points. Also during this time, make sure to slot every green coin you get into the machine and polar peaks. At the end of round 6, open up Pack-a-Punch, collect all the Steadicon pieces, and release the UFOs from inside the Pack-a-Punch portal. By round 7, you should have used all your charges of scope dollars, or made enough money to not need the rest of your charges. This round, you will need to get the trap kills with the Iron Dragon Trap, the Anus Laser, to bring the yellow UFO to its next step. The best way to do this is to train along the ramp inside the room with the trap, although you should avoid going onto the bridge above the trap. Zombie Collision and Infinite Warfare is not the best, and that spot can get you killed within seconds. After the UFO moves to its next step, it is your job to kill zombies with a gun with an arcane core. This will be done with your M1. Sometime during round 8, you should have the UFO fully charged, and then you should attach the yellow orb to your M1. That yellow orb turns the M1 into an absolute beast. Aim to do the first SETI comm on round 8. This is also a great time to perk up. The good old crutch perks up in Adam's, Tough Enough, Quickies, and Bang Bangs are necessities. You have flexibility on your fifth slot, but Racing Stripes is very suggested. The round after you release the UFOs, Hoff will be ready with the SETICOM. If you want to fail a SETICOM to spawn a brute to break the gator teeth, you can, but there will be more chances later. 
The first study comp should be completed easily by using the M1 of Wound Attachment. It'd be even easier if you had Bang Bangs, as it makes it shoot faster. If you get a crappy location for the second or third study comp, there's a solution that will buff the M1 even more. Remember putting on Eagle Eyed? Well, it'll make the M1 a one shot for the next 50 rounds fired. In addition to this, you could also build a trap like the Medusa device from three red coins, or a boombox from two green coins and one blue coin, or one green coin and two red coins. With one of those to help you, you should shred through those study comps. For the rest of the Easter egg, the less zombies you randomly kill, the safer you are. Before you place down your speakers, know that you can choose where each color will be. The first speaker placed down will be yellow, followed by blue, then green, and finally red. By knowing where the colors will be, you can immediately look for the color order on the UFO when you start the Simon Says part. To keep safe when you activate in the speakers, use a cryo need to freeze your entire train before making a run to go put in the speakers. And if you do turn out to fail around, the M1 is more than capable of dispatching a brute. For fighting the alien, the best place to be is on bridges underneath the Spaceland Arch. During the entire boss fight, Make sure that you keep a medium distance between yourself and the train. You obviously don't want the train to be right on your ass, but if you constantly sprint around the bridges, your train will start to separate under both bridges. Try to find a good distance for you. When you choose to down the alien, make sure he's in a position that you can safely punch at him. Cryonades can also be used here along with your M1. Just make sure you don't down the alien while he's inside the middle of your train, because that becomes very unsafe can really help to know what attacks the alien has so you can prepare yourself for all options. The alien can shoot his blaster pistol that does the damage of about two zombie hits. This means that even if you don't have jug, you can still take a blaster shot. The alien also has a melee that has a very limited range. As long as you're not standing right next to him, you should be safe from that. He also can throw a large stun impact grenade thing referred to as the boom boom blaster. It can be easily avoided by going directly underneath where the alien is perched as he will just blast the roof he is standing on. The Boom Boom Blaster can only do the damage of one zombie hit, but it also slows you down. This is a big reason to keep full control of your train. The last thing the alien can do is respawn zombies. This is not a direct attack, but it can still be dangerous because of the ground spawns. This attack can also be punished heavily if you are in a safe position to shoot at the alien. Well that's it. Now it's time for you to go beat the Easter Egg. This video took a lot of time to put together, on top of the time that it took to perfect the strategy. A like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. A special thanks to The Salty Clicker on PSN for helping me make this video. I also live stream on twitch.tv slash hklfslol. I play a lot of COD Zombies, <laughs> and I'd be stoked if you could pop by the stream and say hello. If you know anyone who's struggling with beating this easter egg, please share this with them. Thank you for watching and have a great day.